Dragon Brag Nation, what is up? We are here from Deer Asset Classic in Cambridge, Ohio with Nick and Tom from the wife at the four day outdoor field production school. We are also here in front of a live audience of 20 of our students. We're gonna do something that we've never done before. We're gonna do a little live Q and A action. This is day four of the outdoor video school. The students, the students have had all week to ask us questions. That's scary. It is scary. <laughs> um, so we don't know really what to expect. Hopefully some of them are good, some of them are serious, funny. Not, we kind of left it open-ended, so we're gonna just go, I guess, down the line. Yeah, and, uh, let's go down the line. You first. Uh, you yeah, yeah. yeah, you do it. All right. Question numero uno. When? <laughs> 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 when stand blind hunting, do you prefer a piss jug or a diaper? <laughs> I just let it rip right out of the stand, to be honest. <laughs> just being honest. Yeah. Just being honest. All right, I got one serious one from an anonymous student. What made you want to film hunts? Um, I guess what made me want to film hunts, I'm sure you guys are the same, was probably wanting to document my hunts. Show my friends, show my family. I didn't really had this in mind, but I'm sure you guys all had that same, same yeah. kind of idea. Yeah, you know what, for me, I don't know. For me, it was a little bit more of that cliche. I did want to have my own TV show. That's what I wanted to do, you know? Now that's obviously the case, but it's way mo much more about, uh, you know, it's much, what? It's about a lot much more than that. You know? <laughs> that still don't make any sense. What's wrong with me? It's about much more than that, as you guys well saw all week long you know it's uh, it's about this right here so and also so i don't changed. think me and david didn't grow up in the real tree monster bucks era we were more you know, <laughs> <the 90s. laughs> was it roger Ragland? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> still <laughs> is baby go go Jiminy strong Christmas. Jiminy 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 Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> ah do your filming skills help in the bedroom with your significant other? <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> Aperture priority. <laughs> That's a good one. That is a good one. That is a good one. <laughs> That's a, uh, it's a zoom lens. Oh, he's on fire, isn't he? There's always one in the group. All right, moving uh, on. This is uh, from an anonymous source as well. If you could start your whole outdoor filming and production career over, at a young age again, would you do anything different? I don't know if I would necessarily start it over again. I mean, I, I don't know, I kind of liked how I've developed. It's taken a lot longer. Um, <laughs> if I had to start it over again and fast track it, I'd be right where you guys are, to be honest. You know, that would be the difference, but I think everybody has kind of their own story, their own way of how they got going and stuff like that, and I kind of take pride in that. But um, yeah, if I had to start anything over again, it would definitely be to dive into something like this and you know, get the education right off the bat rather than doing a lot of trial and error beforehand. Yeah, yeah. yeah and see, for me, it's the opposite end of that because if I didn't do all that trial and error, I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing. So, so I wouldn't change a darn thing, but, but that's where we are. We're, we're, here, we're here trying to change that for you guys. So, What was your biggest or worst filming mistake? Um, Bob asking that question. I've already shared this story with you guys as a group, but I'll share it in short form. A long time ago, back in the days of tape, Yes, I did film back in the days of tape, which that wasn't that long ago, guys, but uh, we had a, a wounded animal that we didn't go after the next day. We watched that video over and over and over again uh, all night long, and when we went back to recover it the next day, we did recover it, and I uh, recorded over the whole kill. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that was gone. And it was the girl's first buck she had ever, she'd ever killed, too, Ooh. so... That's I felt. I'm yeah. not, I don't know if I could beat that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty bad. But it, it was yeah. a common mistake, and actually, at the time, I had a my my production company was called Drop Time Productions, and I've got one buddy in particular who called me Drop Footage Productions for years. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that, that was pretty good. Another question, live question, I guess. What do you mean? <laughs> no, like ducked. Jesus. <laughs> you, have, you have to read it. This is live. This is live. No cut. No this cut. This is from uh, Dakota Miller. Oh, boy. Dave, will you go on a date with me? Oh! <laughs> 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 
That's a hard no. <laughs> hard no. I'm off the market, but thank you for asking, Dakota. Did you open it yet? No. Oh. Now I'm scared, though. I know, <laughs> yeah. I know. A little gun shy. The most memorable filmed hunt, I'd say it's probably the same for me, was Alaska, and it was a moose hunt. It's a couple of years ago, and I think just because of where I was, not being in Alaska for my whole life, and you finally get the chance to go out there and film moose hunt. I mean, I was I was on cloud nine the whole time. The the plane ride, being back, sleeping in tents, that stuff was cool to me. I don't think, I mean, we hunt white tails mostly because that's what we grew up on. We're, yeah, we're and it's too expensive for us to do that oh, kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So I think when you film, you get the chance to do that stuff. So definitely Alaska for me. How do you feel about a fist pump after a kill, and why? Fist pump, I don't know. I, I, my emotions just kind of take over after the hunt, yeah. as you could see. I don't really know. I black out. I don't really know what's going on. So whether it's a fist pump, I cry, laugh, yell, whatever it is, it's just it's kind of the emotions that are unraveling in the heat of the moment. So I think we always fist pump when we're filming each other, don't we? <laughs> we probably do, yeah. Tom gives a look where he's looking behind and he goes, <laughs> <laughs> like, what just happened? I do. I do have that look. I never knew that until I watched myself enough. He's like, I don't do that all the time. Like every single time you shoot something, you do that exact same thing. <laughs> I'm right with David. I get excited. You know, some people take that, you know, it, some people I've heard, you know, they, you get too wild, you know, it's that hoorah moment, fist pumping and all that, that they take offense to because you don't think you're, you're giving the animal respect. And, you know, I do that because just like David said, I get so excited, so excited. My emotions take over. We still give that animal respect. And, uh, you know, we, we never, never disrespect it. Look how much we've talked about respecting the animal right here in this class. You know, it's just uh, emotions get the best of yeah, it, too, for sure. sure. Biggest break in the industry to date. I'd have to say the biggest break for me was so a trade show three or four years ago. And I met Tim Burnett for the first time, I think. And I, I think that was the first time I met him at that show. And he was producing a show, and he wanted me to produce it for him. And then... He ended up not having time for it, so being the nice businessman that he is, instead of you know just giving it away to anybody, he gave it to me and said, you can have the whole contract. So that's what led me to leave my accounting job and start producing that show full time. And that was my first gig, and that was my f the first big break, and that was the reason I left you know the full time business world. So that was easily my biggest break and probably one of the biggest connections and handshakes ever. I ever made for sure. Kyle, uh, this is a good one for me, and, and, and uh, you guys will know the answer already, but what is your favorite and most rewarding part of your job? <clears throat> this right here, hands down. Q&A? Q&A, yeah. it's definitely <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> Q&A with tag and brag, yes. Thanks, no, Kyle. it is, I mean, uh, educating people in this is by far it. Whether it's a seminar I'm doing for an hour or somewhere, or whether we're standing up here for four days, getting a chance to have people walk in, almost be intimidated a little bit as, boy, I hope, you know, I don't know much. I hope this is not going to be out of my league. And then to see them all leaving on day four going, man, I learned more than I, that I bargained for, you know, this was, this was great. And that, that's definitely, definitely. And then more importantly, I guess when some, and that, this happens all, a lot nowadays too, to, to get that phone call or email saying, hey, I got a job doing such and such, thank you that that's ultimate reward i guess you know but great question kyle when did you start filming hunts i think i was just going into college maybe it was senior year of high school i filmed hunts a little as a kid i take that back i lie i filmed hunts a little as a kid with my dad's camera but i think when i first started taking it seriously was high school when i started to hunt on my own and i was out there by myself i brought the camera with me and solo films almost every hunt i thought i was going to be the next you know, Tim Burnett or whoever, I thought if I could film something great that somebody would buy my footage and I realized then that it didn't matter to me as much to be on TV or to do that stuff. I just enjoyed bringing it back and showing my friends, my family, because once you see them and see them enjoy it, it doesn't really matter who sees it. As long as you get the people that mean the most to you to watch it and enjoy it, then then that's why you do it. And I think and that's the reason you do it in the end. It's a hunting, hunting related broadhead of choice. Interesting uh, for me too, because I've always been fixed blade, you know, all, all my life. Yes, uh, expandables. Just kidding. Were, so, yeah, yeah. Really you actually said yeah. I knew. He used to start chiseling his own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were stone, stone. stone. 
I shot. They worked. They were they accurate. Played broadheads forever. I was a firm believer, guys. We uh, we do shoot G5 is what we shoot, <laughs> and I shot the Montex for a long time. I still do, but now uh, I, we've been shooting the Havocs, and I say this very recently. We started shooting the Havocs more. What do you shoot? Ramcat broadheads with fixed blade. Fixed. Ramcat. Ramcat broadheads. Broadheads. Ramcat. Fixed blades. Fixed blade. Won't shoot anything else ever. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing the ever best made. Best thing ever. I trust my. Can life you do that one? Yeah, do that one. <laughs> trust my life with Ramcat. Trust my life. Take others. Bob Weaver, what advice could you give on attracting sponsors and endorsement opportunities? How should companies be contacted, and what should be asked for or offered? Hmm. Good question. Good one. Good I mean, I think. Uh, Craig touched on it yesterday pretty well. Um, don't contact anyone or don't try and seek sponsorship until you're ready. I mean, I, I'll be completely honest. It's a mistake that Dean and I have made, you know, in the past, just kind of getting too out in front of ourselves and, you know, wanting that opportunity or wanting to kind of go too fast before we had, you know, real quality production or, something that we could really offer, you know, the sponsor, the sponsor uh, endorsement opportunity. Um, as far as how they should be contacted, I mean, the one, like events like this, you know, we've kind of harped on that all, all week long. You know, the networking, really meeting people face to face, being able to shake somebody's hand, I think is a, you know, is a huge benefit. Sending an email for the first time, I mean, you heard the guys from Exodus, you know, talking about that. They get hundreds of those emails a day. You know, so it just gets lost in translation. There's no way to like differentiate yourself that way. Um, you know, so obviously getting yourself out there, going to trade shows, going to events like this, um, you know, obviously, you know, producing stuff for other people and, and being able to go on hunts and spending time in camp one on one with people, you know, that's obviously the ultimate opportunity. But hey, guys, those trade shows, I mean, for me, that was where I met Tim, so I can definitely agree with that and I think anytime you have a, a company that you know somebody at whether it's just one company small company if they need help you know at that booth help them don't ask for anything get there stay stay there if you have to you know do whatever it takes to, to be there as long as you can because those are the people that will give you stuff in return when they can and when they see fit and when they need something because they'll, they'll go to the people that helped them in the past and also being there at those trade shows, you'll meet a lot of other people there. I mean, you look at, you sit there for eight hours a day and all you see is other companies looking at you the whole day. So, and a I lot think of eyeballs. Once you are, like once some you do get in a relationship or a partnership with somebody is really like the follow up, you know, so they're giving you, even if it's just product, you know, to start off with, whether you send them pictures, short video clips, and e a thank you email as soon as you get the product or whatever, you know, that goes a long way. It shows that you're engaged, you're involved, you're not just asking for something as soon as you receive it, you know, then they never hear from you again. How many min mins of footage do you shoot for one episode? Ooh, that's a great question. Really good question. That all depends. Um, it's tough to say in minutes. I mean, an episode is 22 minutes of content, and you're probably realistically shooting 20 minutes of actual show content. The rest is cut up with advertising, maybe a little more than that or less. Um, but the point there is 20 minutes may not seem like a lot, you know, because you saw oh, the kill shack be five, six minutes, but you think about all the stuff we did yesterday. We spent six hours out there shooting, and I pulled a minute video from that. Not that I could have made it longer, but the point there is, is you shoot so much that it never makes it to TV, and you just gotta choose the best of the best. And every hunt's different. You know, last year at Kentucky, I shot a buck the first couple hours of the hunt so everything that was filmed then on was with a purpose and I was I knew that there's a good chance this will make the episode if we go to the last day of the hunt well we've built up all these scenes all these possible stories for that episode so that hard drive will be filled it just it's there's so many factors and I can't tell you minutes I can say if we bring a terabyte drive out there Good chance that we'll fill that drive for an episode. Yeah. Nick, you wrap it up. I will have Dakota come up and do something. Yeah, Dakota, Dakota, you come and wrap it up. Come on, wrap it up, Dakota. No. Bring your grunt call. Bring, bring your grunt the grunt call. call. <laughs> yeah, bring it. Ready? I just want to grab one snorkel. No, no, no. Sequence. 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 Like you're really, you're really chasing her. You're, you're about to. 
Mount. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Get on right. and go for a ride. Uh, but you're not there yet. Wait, you're almost wait. Awesome. And there's another buck coming in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Should, should you say something first? Like, thank you for joining us or something? Yeah, like yeah. Right? You should wrap it. Wrap it up. Say, thanks for joining us. And then we'll see. Thanks for joining us. Yes! Yes! Yeah, alright, Dakota!